Good. Now, isotope is completely stable if the nuclei will not, okay, so this is about stability, stability of nuclei. Good, and so it's expected that an isotope is completely stable if the nucleus will not spontaneously decompose. Elements with atomic number one to 20 are very stable. And so from hydrogen to calcium, Ca, that is element number one to element number 20, okay, are relatively stable. And so if they are stable, then they do not undergo radioactivity because stable nuclei do not undergo radioactivity. The unstable ones that would undergo radioactivity in order that they will achieve stability. Now, one is to one ratio of proton to neutron, that is P is to NO ratio, N power zero ratio. Example, carbon 12 has a proton of six and a neutron of six. What do we mean by that? If you take carbon 12, carbon 12, the mass number is 12, atomic number is six. And so if you want a neutron number, it will be 12 minus six, and that is six. And so the proton number is six, the neutron number is also what? Six. And so if you are looking at what to call the proton to neutron ratio, just like saying six divided by six, and that is one over one. So the ratio is what? One is to one. And so species or elements that will give us a ratio of one is to one are mostly stable. They are stable. Elements with atomic numbers from 21 to 83, including the transition elements, that is transition elements from 21 to 30, are marginally stable. They are not very stable, but to a larger extent are considered stable. And so they are within the ratio, that is if you look at the proton to neutron ratio, we have one is to 1.5, okay? which means you have a proton, a ratio of proton being one and that of neutron being what? 1.5. Yeah, so if you have such a ratio, then it's expected that the, the element in question is what? Marginally or partially stable. And so example is mercury 200 has 80 protons and 120 neutrons. And if you look at the ratio of neutron to proton, okay? 120 over 180, sorry, 80. Okay, we we'll get one is to one is to 1.5, and so we we'll say that mercury 200 is marginally or partially stable. Okay. Okay, so elements with atomic number greater than 83, that is 83 and beyond, are considered unstable. They are unstable and are also said to be what radioactive. And so any element that is found beyond 83, uh, atomic number 83, is said to be radioactive because it has unstable nuclei. Example, we have uranium and plutonium. These are radioactive elements. And for them to be stable, they have to undergo what we call radioactive decay. Now, alpha decay. When we say alpha decay, when we say alpha decay, what do we mean? An alpha decay is a mission of an alpha particle, like the name suggests, alpha. So the mission of alpha particle. An alpha particle could also be represented by the symbol H, which is a, is a helium atom with a mass of four and a charge of what? Two, because an alpha has two protons and two neutrons. And so if you look at the ratio, uh, sorry, put two protons and two neutrons, just like the helium nucleus. And so the charge is plus two because of two protons that it has. Okay, so alpha decay causes the mass number to decrease by four and the atomic number to decrease by two. So we have to take note of this. Alpha decay causes the mass number to decrease by four and the atomic number to decrease by two. Now, atomic number determines the element. All nuclear equations are balanced. Okay, so now let's look at what I mean by an alpha decay using examples. Now write the nuclear equation for the radioactive decay of polonium 210 by alpha emission. And so the first step is that we write the element that you are looking at. That is polonium 200. And so this is polonium 200. 
the 210, sorry, polonium 210, the 210 represents the mass number, and the atomic number is 84. Okay, so mass number 210, atomic number 84. And so the next thing is that the next step is you draw the arrow telling you that there's going to be what? A decay. And so that is the arrow. Since it's going to be a decay, which means it's going to break down. Okay. And so if it's a decay, we're saying that if it's a decay, that is alpha decay, the mass number will decrease by four, atomic number will increase by what? Two. And so you observe that the 2010 here will decrease by four. So if it decreases by four, it means the next element that will be formed will be what? 206. Will be 206. Yeah, so this is the alpha decay. And the alpha decay we said is what? A helium atom. And with a mass of four and then what? Charge of what? Two or atomic number of two. And so, so and element number 82 is what? Lead, PB. And so the mass will be 206. Will be 206. This is going to be decreasing mass number by four. Then you have the positive sign here indicating that it is added to all, there's going to be what? These are the products of the reaction. So this is another example. Write the nuclear equation for the radioactive decay of radium 226 by alpha. And so the first step is that we write the symbol for radium. Radium is Ra. So, and so the mass number is 226. Is 226. And the atomic number is what? 88. And so the next step is that we write the arrow. And once it's an alpha decay, quickly we write what? Alpha. HE42. HE42. And so HE42, since it's an alpha decay, then. And so we now have to balance. And so if this one is going to decrease by 2, you have 86. And if this one is going to decrease by 4, you have what? 2, 2, 2. So you have so, so 86, element number 86 is what? Random. Rn, random. And then the mass will be 2, 2, 2. And so the positive sign here will come, indicating that they are added. And so this is the nuclear equation for the radioactive decay of radium 2, 2, 6. We shall now look at the beta decay. For beta decay, it involves the emission of a beta particle, as indicated there. That's a symbol for the beta decay. A fast-moving electron denoted by the symbol E minus, which is the electron, with mass zero, charge negative one. Beta has is an insignificant mass, that is a mass of zero. And the charge is negative one because it's an electron. Good. It's also important to know that beta decay causes no change in mass. With beta decay, the mass number remains unchanged and causes the atomic number to increase by one. So just like, unlike uh, alpha decay, we say with alpha decay, it causes a decrease in mass by four and decrease in atomic number by what? Two. With beta decay, okay, there's no effect in mass, but the atomic number will increase by what? One. So we need to be very careful of that. Okay, so, and in, so for example, we say write the nuclear equation for the radioactive decay of carbon-14 by beta emission. And so carbon-14, so first we write the symbol for carbon-14. Carbon-14 will be C, 14, 6. 14 as a mass number, 6 as an atomic number. Then our arrow will come. The arrow will come. And since it's a beta decay, Quickly, we'll go and write beta, symbol B, beta, zero, negative one. Zero, negative one, right? But remember, we said that the mass will remain unchanged. The atomic number will increase by what? One. And so what will be the mass here? If it's going to be unchanged, it will still be what? 14. Are you getting that? It's going to be one. Then you said this one will increase by one. So from six, it becomes what? Seven. Good. And so element seven is what? Neutro uh, nitrogen. So nitrogen 14, since this one is going to be unchanged, mass will remain the same. 
atomic number will increase by one. So from six, it becomes what? Seven. Then the addition sign will come. Good. To, say, to indicate that the equation is what? Balanced. So you know that even though we are saying that it's going to be increased by one, in effect, if you are going to balance, you see that here, this, on the right hand side, you have six. Here you have seven and then what? Minus one. That's also six. Then 14, zero is also the same as what? 14. So it's balanced. That is beta decay. Now, finally, we'll go to the gamma decay. With gamma decay, there is no change in mass number, and there's also change in what? Atomic number. And so we should take note. So if you're confronted with a gamma decay uh, you know, question, we should also take note that the mass number and the atomic number will remain unchanged. And so we write the formula for the species that's going, undergoing re, what, the decay, then we bring our arrow, then we bring the gamma decay, indicating that zero as mass number, zero as atomic number. Then we have the element that is supposed to undergo the decay as a product, and that will give us a balance, and we ensure that the atomic number and the mass numbers are balanced, and we are good to go. That brings us to the end of this uh, episode one of nuclear chemistry. Thank you for listening.